you and I both know that um, I wouldn't have been able to stay on top of this case if it hadn't been for your help. Oh, well, it's always a pleasure to be with you. Thank you. Sure. Have a good day. Sure. During this demanding and brutal trial, the spelling is L I L A. <laughs> yeah, that. Oh, Kath, Hi. honey. What are you doing hiding in the shadows? These lovely people of the press persuasion would like to speak to us, you know? <laughs> uh, Charlie's here. Charlie, honey, Doesn't see she you. look nice? Yeah, Charlie. Listen, Lila, um, you have a comment? isn't it just terrible sure. having to have your privacy invaded like this? Oh, Don't you hate it? I don't know what it feels like to be at the Oscars, you know, with a green jury. <laughs> so anyway, I just want to say that I believed in Kath from the very beginning. I told him you reminded me of that great lawyer, Gregory Peck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, honey, I, I've told the members of the press that I wouldn't be talking with them tonight. It'll be at the press conference tomorrow. Oh, so, Charlie, there's sorry. a table over in the corner. We'll meet you there. Listen, oh, honey, you handle this for me, okay? Oh, oh, okay, yeah. I'll okay. do that. I'll be right there. Mrs. Corey. Uh, so could you give us a little more information? Yeah, well, yeah. you know, he's very private. You know, most of the great legal minds are like that. Excuse me, but why, I just am I, why, why am I not surprised? You know something? Only you could manage to make Paulina's trial about yourself. No, I don't know what's worse. Letting Paulina take the rap for what you did or letting her believe she could actually give birth to a reptile like you. I'm not scared of you. Good. You don't have to be scared of me. Because I'm not going to do anything to you. I already knew that. You know, the worst possible thing I could dream up for you is right around the corner, my friend. Do you have any idea what they're going to do to you in prison? Do you? I do. Let me tell you something. Those earrings are going to be very popular with your new peer group. Yeah, real big threat, Captain. You say whatever you want. Paulina, she's not gonna let anything happen to me. She'll do anything she can to keep me out of prison. What's What's going going on? On? What happened? She was so scared and now she's tied all together. I'm so scared. No pulse. Well, shock her again? Charge? Had a charge. Clear? Charge! Had a charge. Clear! What's wrong? What's going on, Paul? What's going on here? Second, second, I just got the worst feeling. Are you all right? No, it's like somebody's clawing at my insides. Listen, listen to me. Let me just stress. I'm not going to do nothing. No, Jake, I felt this before. In the fire when I thought we were going to lose Tante. Hey, Paulina, why don't you tell me what's going on there? She because I don't know. They just pushed me out of the way, Nick. I'm sorry. No, no. Defibrillate. Charge. Have a charge. Clear. Come on. Charge. All right. Clear. I need a therapist. Let me do the job. Let me do what are the they job. doing to her? I don't understand it. Why do I feel like I should be doing There's something? There's nothing you can do. That's what sucks about something like this, okay? What are they doing to her? Is going to be okay? The patient has internal bleeding. She's critical. The patient has a name. She's a person. Does she have any family here? Oh, I'm the closest thing she has to anyone. What is she? We're taking her into surgery now. If a parent were here, she could sign the consent. Nurse, form. nurse, nurse, nurse. Would she flatline? When, 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 did, when did that happen? Almost immediately after we went in with the crash cart. What I felt? Listen, I know this is tough for you, and you're stuff, right? I swear to God, if she doesn't make it, I'm gonna kill that little son. I'm gonna kill Tito! Don't think about that jerk right now, all right, Nick? How can I not think about it, Jake? She's in there. She's dying. She's gotta go to surgery. And all I can hear is that jerk's voice in my head. Telling Remy, oh, how much I love you, how much I need you, how much I care about you. What? What do you mean, what? I should have thrown that guy off the balcony like I had the chance the first time, but she said no because they grew up together. They have a whole relationship, a family. Timothy? His name is not Timothy, it's Tito. And he almost killed her. And it's still happening. Listen to me. As soon as Remy's okay, we'll go tear the guy a new, new hole to breathe out of. But right now, you need to calm down because they can kick you out of this hospital, and that's the last thing you want. Remy, Remy, Remy and Timothy grew up together? Nick, I'm so sorry. Why don't you just go now? Haven't you done enough already? Didn't you just hear me? Why don't you just leave? Hi, Nick. 
Listen, knock it off, all right? Now, everyone's hurting you. Don't take it out on Pauline. Why not? You know, I can maybe sort of understand Remy Fung for Tito's crap. He was all she had for a real long time. But you... I don't understand. You don't understand? Good God, Paulina. How many times did Joe or I tell you to be careful of that jerk? Watch out for him. You not only ignored us, but you helped him along every step of the way. You're the freaking poster child for aiding and abetting. Remy was in that car because of you. You told her to watch out for me because you don't want me messing with your precious Timothy. All right, I said that's enough. Okay, now she thought Tito was her son. Yeah, and because she thought that, she let me get away with one night. <laughs> and now we're all sitting around here waiting to find out if Remy's victim number two. Mrs. Carlino, Remy just went in the surgery. Why, what's going on? Well, she had some internal bleeding and it caused her heart to stop. <gasps> now we need to find the source of the bleeding and repair it. And I'm afraid that she is in critical condition. <sighs> The surgery's gonna take a couple hours, so maybe you wanna get some food. I'm not going anywhere. Fine. I'll, uh, I'll let you know as soon as I hear anything. Thank you, Doctor. Look, Pauline, I'll let you know as soon as she comes out of surgery. I'm gonna stay with Nick until he calms down, and then she'll go find Joe and... Nick, 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 Nick. Nick, look, look, listen to me, listen to me. I will leave you alone in just a minute, all right? But you need to tell me about what you just said. That Tim and Remy knew each other for years. I just need a little time with Paulina. You need a little time with Paulina. Tito, you had a little time with Paulina. Remember? You had that gun to her head. Look, I just gotta explain, okay? I killed Harrison to protect you her. You killed Harrison to cover your own fat behind. <laughs> you knew you weren't Paulina's kid. You knew you wouldn't get the money. You know how many times I heard Paulina say that she understood where I came from, understood what it was like to grow up on the streets, to be unwanted, to be unloved. She told me all the terrible things that she had done. Don't, Don't ever compare yourself to my wife again. Do you understand me? So would you even say her name? I know I'm right. She'll help me beat this. Yo, yo. Mm. Mr. Carlino, are you aware of the statutes concerning assault? Or is that yet another law you seem to have lost Adams, track Adams, I need of. a hand over here. Actually, you know what, Reiner? It's Captain Paulino to you. Not after I file these charges against you. Oh, Vicky, this is a surprise. So is botulism. Uh, you know what, honey? All that pain and suffering you've been through is starting to show on your face. As I can see, the lines are deeper and the bags are baggier and the mouth is a little bit meaner. But you know what? I would love to stay and chat, but you see, I can't because I am celebrating Cass's legal victory. Don't you wish Jake would do something you could pretend to be a little bit proud of? But I'll tell you what. I'm going to hold my breath. You do that, honey. Uh, excuse me. Um... No, 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 I'm not, I'm not Frankie. You, you, who are you? It, it, it's all right, I'm so sorry. I shouldn't have come up to you, but I, I didn't know that you well, knew her. I do know her. Who are you? Uh, my name is Anne O'Donnell, and I know I look a lot like Frankie Like Frank, her? But... My God, you are her! No, no, I am not her, and I am so sorry that I scared you that way. Me? What about Cass? Wait until he sees but you. He knows, he, he knows. I actually, I, I work with him. You... Work with him, you look exactly like Frankie, and nobody knows about this. We tried to keep a low profile. You succeeded. Well, you know, if you would give me just one minute, I could explain everything, but I need to ask you something privately, okay? Okay. You know, I don't see why we can't just go over to Winthrop's table and ask him some questions. He obviously likes you, right? We just make some small talk, at least get some human interest stuff from the kid. The man asked for privacy. I plan to give him that. You know, I don't see how Bernstein or Woodway could have ever been this passive. You know, you can stop talking any minute now. Listen for a change. Number one, the story and the trial are both over. Number two, I'm not going to alienate Cass over some human interest stuff and lose him as a source for a good story. And number three, and you might want to write this one down, interns, listen and learn not question and critique. You got that? You watch reruns on cable? Reruns, yeah, I watch them all the time. 
You know how cute Lou Grant was when he chewed up Mary? Well, you're not. So ultimately, I'm happy to say your testimony against Paulina didn't hurt after all. I'm just glad the whole mess is over. Victoria actually called me to tell me that she was coming over here with some good news. That must be what it was. Hmm. Well, didn't you see her? She came in when I came in. No. I wonder what happened. Uh, Frankie was a, a Shirtail relative of mine. My first husband was her cousin. I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. It's just so weird standing here talking to you. I still cannot see any difference between you and Frankie, and I, I'm sure it's a very strange experience. Yeah. <sighs> um, I saw you talking to Lila Corey. Yeah. You're probably going to think I'm a terrible person, but um, I need to speak to someone about this. Why me? I hope I don't offend you, but I, I couldn't help but notice just now, and I, I may have totally misread the situation, but it seemed to me that you don't care much why. Oh, no, that's, that's not true. I'm so sorry. Don't care for doesn't quite cut it. I cannot stand her southern guts. Nick, honestly, I don't mean to upset you, but I need to know, how long have you known that Tim and Remy knew each other before they came here? For a while. <sighs> Two months. Why didn't you tell me, or Joe? I wanted to tell you and Joe. I tried to get Tito to tell you. But Remy made me stay out of it. Why? Because she was so protective of that guy. She said that he had just found you, and if you knew that you might not understand. All right, all right, all right. Listen to me, this is important. Was it Remy who didn't want other people to know, or Timothy? Why don't you go ask Timothy and leave me the hell alone? Good God, Paulina, Remy could be dying right now. And this is all you can think about? What the hell is wrong with you? Listen, why don't you let me walk it out, all right, Paulina? No, no, I'll be fine. You stay with Nick. Nick, I'm gonna do what you said. I'm gonna go ask Timothy. But I want you to know that I'm not going to add abusing a prisoner to the list of charges against you, because I think I have enough with obstruction of justice, suppression of evidence, impeding Officer Burrell's investigation. <laughs> oh, you gotta be kidding me. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I'm gonna go to the ladies' room and powder my nose. You wanna come with me? Sorry, it's kinda weird going to the bathroom with someone else. That's my girl. <laughs> you know, she's right. It is a strange custom. You stay here and take care of your daddy for me. I'll be right back. Love you, honey. Mm. Hurry. Oh. Uh, well, bye bye now. Just look at her making a spectacle out of herself. <laughs> She's acting like winning this case is such a big deal. It is a big deal, isn't it? Mrs. Carlino is a really nice lady, and she did not kill Mayor Harrison. You know what? You are absolutely right. Mm -hmm. Watching Lila milk it like this, I haven't enjoyed winning a case this much in years. Didn't Mom used to make us wear party hats every time you won a case? Oh, my God, you remember that? You two look awful cute in those silly-looking hats. <laughs> you know, I, I don't know anyone else who would ever see that Mom and Lila had anything in common, but they do. They both love life. Party hats kind of people. Yeah. Don't do that! You're a reason for party hats. You're weird. Yes, I am. But you're weird and happy. Tonight I'm very happy, honey. <laughs> so anyway, Lila tricks Matt into sleeping with her so she can get pregnant and hold on to her ex-husband and his money. You're kidding. No, and then, after the ex-husband dies, then she marries Matt for his money. Why is she with Cass? Well, after the Corey money kind of dwindled, then she dumped Matt. Cass isn't that rich, is he? You know something, I, I don't know why... Cass is with her to tell you the truth, but I will tell you something I do know to be true about that woman. She can spin a very elaborate web, and I don't know, maybe this is all a plan to get something more than Cass's heart. Cass seems like such a great guy. Why would he wind up with a woman like that? You didn't know Cass after he lost Frankie. He just... He never really got over it, and then Lila came along, and... He's vulnerable. Yeah. You know, talking to you, it's, it's, it's sort of like talking to an old friend. You, 
even though I, I, I know you're not, Frankie, but... It, it must be a very strange experience. Mm. <laughs> I can't help but wonder what it's like for Cass to just to see this face after all this time. I'm, I'm sure it's hard for him. I don't know. I, I loved someone once, and he died. Sometimes I think to see his face would just be the greatest gift. You know, you don't have to come down here. You can go now. No, okay. that's right. I think I'm gonna hang out with you. There's some things that uh, people shouldn't have to go through alone. I remember when I first came here. I didn't want to. You made me. I was so ticked off. Always looking to leave. But now I don't remember when or how I realized I wasn't alone. I wanted that for Remy. Well, she's in there, and she knows she doesn't have any family out here. And deep down, I think she knows that Tito doesn't give a damn about her. But she, she knows that she can count on you. We were trying to find her mother. That's all she wanted. You know? She wanted to know where she came from. Wanted to have some kind of connection to family. Now she might die without ever knowing who her mother was. <laughs> Gee, I, I would really like to know what's so funny about my filing charges against I, Mr. Carlino. I just think that uh, it's amazing how well his plan worked. <laughs> his plan? Yeah. Uh, look, Joe knew he couldn't suss out the murderer by conventional means, so he had to go undercover where he wouldn't have the restrictions of procedure. Uh, Tony. No, I think I, it's about time that we tell the DA, you know, I mean, case is closed, we got our man. Joe's background is in private investigating, but you can't be that private if you're the captain of a police precinct. So we came up with the plan that I would be the authoritarian jerk and he'd be my victim. <laughs> it worked. We got our solution. <laughs> what a crock. Prove it, sister. Try to prove it and I'll have every cop in this precinct back up my story. Now, wait a minute, no, Officer No, no, you Brown. wait. I know you think the sun rises and sets with you, but it doesn't. You need us to do your grunt work, and you need us to make your cases. I would love to see how many convictions you can rack up when every cop in Bay City hates your guts. So press charges against Joe. I'd love to see what happens to your precious reputation then. That's a threat. That is a threat. Yes, it is. So, you have two choices. You can go after Joe and watch your career go belly up, or you can say that he was an undercover operative all along, a loyal member of your law enforcement dream team. Huh? What's it gonna be? Uh, now would be a good time for you to leave. You know, you were given an amazing opportunity. It's mm -hmm. too bad you couldn't make more of it. Now that felt good. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, you didn't have to do that. Thank you. I know, I know this has not been easy for you the last couple of weeks, but uh, I didn't make it too easy for you myself. I didn't become a cop because I thought it was going to be easy, you know? You're a great cop. Thank you. And you're a better friend. Uh, 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 I just passed out that memo banning uh, intra-cop hugging. Well, so you know what? I must have, have misplaced just... the memo somewhere. Come over here. <sighs> Paulina. Hey, Blue. How's Remy? Are you all right? Yeah. Yeah, I'm better now.
kidding me? You'll trust her. I was just, I was so scared. I've been going crazy thinking that you hate me. Really? I mean, when on the docks when I grabbed you, and I just, I felt like a trapped dog and all the stuff I said. I, I know, I know. You're the only one, you're the only one who ever cared. You're the only one who ever understood. I do, too. I do understand. I do. I know how alone and scared you must feel. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. Oh, God, this is barbaric. Yeah, it's... I want to help you. See, I knew, I knew you would. I talked to a lawyer. For me? Yes. He said he needs answers fast before they question you. What? Look, he said the biggest problem is everything you did seems premeditated, which... which is first-degree murder, which could get you the death sentence. Oh, God. No, wait, stay with me. Please stay with me. We don't have much time. He says the fact that you doctored the DNA test makes it look like all one big elaborate scam. I'm so sorry. I know you are. I know you are. Listen, listen to me. There's one way out. What? I told the lawyer what I really believe. That you did all this for someone we both love. Yeah, I told you. I told Joe that, that I did it to protect you. And? And my real child. I, I don't... You weren't just protecting me by killing Beth, but her too. That's how you got the locket, wasn't it? I don't understand. No. Joe's going to drag me out of here in about two seconds, and we won't be able to talk again, so you've got to tell me. You did this all for Remy, didn't you? You'd do anything to spare her more pain. I mean, you didn't know her birth mother could have been a drunk or someone, or who didn't want to talk to her. Yeah. So you just did the hard part for her, didn't you? Come on, Tim, this is your only way out. You've got to tell me. You did this for Remy, didn't you? Yeah. And that's why you took the locket. Yeah, I just, I just, I just, I borrowed it. I didn't, I didn't want to see her get hurt. You didn't even ask how she was, you bastard! She could be dying and you don't even care! Scammed you? Damn straight how to feel! Ha! You know when your mother dumped you? She probably knew what Remy and I had to learn the hard way. I can't stop that. I gotta get to Remy. Remy. Hey, Doctor. What's going on? How'd it go? How'd it, how'd it go? How'd it go? Well, the surgery took care of the immediate problem. Now it all depends on how hard she fights. That's when I realized, when I almost lost Jake, just how far Lila was willing to go to make sure I paid. That's horrible. I know, and that, I mean, I'll tell you, that's the part I couldn't forgive. I, I, I could understand the anger, I could understand the resentment, I could even understand wanting to get back at me. But what she did to Jake, and to my kids, I mean, she just made sure she went that extra mile, and the whole thing was public. Do you think she'd ever do something like that to Charlie and Cass? No. No, I, I, I think I was special. Although if she wanted something, she'd just walk right over their backs to get what she wanted and never look back. Oh, God, that's so scary. Mm. Um, I'm sorry, you know, I'm supposed to be meeting my husband here. I, I suppose I should go look for him. Um, sure. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, do you know where the ladies' room is? Oh, yeah, it's right down there. Oh, okay, thanks a lot. Hey, Vicky. Oh, Donna was looking for you. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> looky, looky. Lila's having her picture taken. Again. <laughs> Lila sure does like having her picture taken. Yeah, she'll be here in about another three or four hours, probably. <laughs> <clears throat> Maybe if she knew you were giving her an engagement ring tonight, she'd hurry. I hate to tear you away. I can hardly wait for your press conference. I've got so much to tell them about yeah, you. I you do. <laughs> so much to say. I'm gonna get you doing Oh, um, Charlie, what are we gonna wear tomorrow? 
Yes, Lila, that's going to be a very interesting press conference. She looks exactly like Frankie. Well, then Cass should leave Lila. No, what? All we know about the lady is that she looks like Frankie. It still makes her more suitable than Lila. Well, just as long as you don't hold a grudge. No, I need to be more like you. I need to learn to forgive and forget. I'm telling you, I had a very long conversation with this woman, and I could still put my hand on a Bible and tell you it was Frankie. Well, Lila was very full of herself tonight. Do you think she even knows about this woman? I don't know. She did seem pretty secure in the idea of Cass. Well, of course she is. I mean, this woman might look like Frankie, but she's not Frankie. Hmm. I'll tell you one thing, though. When she talks about Cass, she's in love with him. You know, talking to you is really interesting. It's kind of like talking to someone from the Stone Age or the 80s or something. You know, it's a little too late to butter me up now, right? You know, I understand morals and being polite. Well, but which is a 50s concept, right? But it just doesn't sell newspapers. <sighs> Casey, Casey, you know, you remind me a lot of myself when I first started out. So much to learn, just ready to run out there and get the big story, no matter what it takes. Let the chips fall where they may, right? Oh, bad and so rude to me. Just because I like having my picture taken. It's funny. Oh, you don't have to be so rude. I'm tired. Let me go to bed. Hey, do you know how absolutely crazy I am about you? That I think you're the greatest kid in America? Gee, I guess I forgot you telling me at breakfast. A note at lunch and a toasted dinner. <laughs> Good night, sweetheart. Good night, sweetie. Oh, God. You have no idea how much it means to me that that child seems to want me to be part of his family. Well, I think the decision is unanimous. Okay, give me that. You come over here. Oh, barrister of mine. Oh. What I want you to oh. do is sit down. Whilst I steal another bottle of Donna Champagne, and you and I are gonna toast to your legal tramp, adieu. Adieu. Oh well, that's French for with a lasso. <laughs> <laughs> I love it when you get bilingual on me. I'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> thinking about Cass? Oh, Cass. wonderful life together. Oh, oh, yes, that's so amusing, yes. Well, you know how it is with kids. Well, Jasmine, she's off on her modeling assignments, and Charlie, she's off at Harvard. Oh, oh, yes. Well, no, Cass is, is. he's in the shower. Of course I'll tell him you called. Yes, yes, yes. Goodbye, Mr. President. Honey, man, would you help me with these damn cufflinks? Oh, sweetheart, you just missed the president. Oh, good. You a windbag? Oh, 
now. The Chief Justice said the Supreme Court cannot be calling the President of the United States a windbag. Only to you, my confidant, my soulmate, my raison d'être. Oh, it was so sweet of you when you said that on Barbara Walters. Oh, it was only the truth, darling, only the truth. I mean, we both know that I never would have won that Nobel Prize if it hadn't been for you. Oh, silly, I just did a little editing, that thought. Why must you always be so modest? You know what? There is nothing in my life with you that I would change. Absolutely nothing except... Yeah? It's time for you to take your turn now. I have a steady job. Okay, Chaos. You know how hard that is for me. And Charlie's off at Havid, and Jasmine has really good representation. You've done all these things for everyone else. It's time you thought about yourself. Oh, now you know that I'm just a simple housewife. No, no. What is it you want? What do you really want? All this money and fame and the perfect family, I mean, is that all there is? I told you, I'm a simple housewife. Lila, I've got it. Your jewelry design. Oh, stop. Yes. No. Now yes. you know I just dabble. No, no, no. Yeah. You, you, you. <laughs> you could really help people. Oh, it is a shame. So many women just don't know how to accessorize. Don't hide that bright, bright light under a basket any longer. Do it. Lila, follow your bliss. <laughs> well, you know, now that Cher is singing again, I mean, there is a void in the infomercial world. You know, maybe I can get on one of those shows. <sighs> <laughs> things were bad, which was most of the time. I would spin all these fantasies, you know. This happened or that happened, then I'd be happy. Seeing you asleep on the couch like this <sighs> makes me realize I couldn't be any happier. You love me and we're going to be together forever. I have Jasmine and Charlie. And you. Mm. And you all I'm ever gonna be. It doesn't make any sense. How can this woman be in love with Cass if she hardly knows him? Of course, with Cass, that might help. <laughs> I don't know, but it just, it can't be an accident that she that she looks exactly like Frankie. You know, maybe it's just fate giving Cass what he needs and what he wants. And maybe it's just Victoria rubbing her hands together, hoping that something terrible is going to happen to Lila. Oh, that would be the cherry on the Sunday of the day. Well, I guess it's about time for me to get the old walker out to coat check. <laughs> Chris, when do I get my expense account? Oh, your expense account. Mm -hmm. In about a week. After hell freezes over. The man is negative. Excuse I don't me. have a lot of time, and I don't want your boss to know about this. About what? I can give you a great exclusive, but you can never reveal your source, ever. You got that? Your cell awaits. I gotta tell you hot stuff. When Paulina slugged you, it looked like she wasn't quite as ready to help you as you thought she'd be. It's no big deal. Nobody's ever helped me out anyway. Paulina was willing, but that's all over now. Come on, let's go. I said, let's go. Can you just... Can you just do me one favor? Will you tell Remy that I'm... I'm sorry.
Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Can you feel that? Can you feel that? That's my locket. You have one just like it. From... From me. Joe, do me a favor. Can you look over there for me? It's not here, honey. No, come on. I know it's there. Could you just just look on the other side, okay? Just just look for me, okay? Come on. Come on. Come on, baby. Open your eyes. Open your eyes for Mama. Come on, baby. 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 Mom, baby, now they're together. Just like they always should have been. Just like you and I are together forever. Go, baby. Go, baby. Jake, why? Why are you pulling the fine out now when it's probably too late? Hush, little baby. Don't say a word. But it's gonna burn you over. If that lucky bird don't sing, well, it's gonna buy you a diamond ring. That time we don't shine. Mama's gonna want you. Mom. Oh, baby. Oh, baby, I'm right here. Mama's right here. Oh, baby. <laughs> Tomorrow on Another World. I want you with me. Always. Forever. It's his guys with her. Keep your mouth shut and your eyes open. A good reporter's always looking for a new angle in a story. Can you tell us how you feel about him working so closely with a woman that looks just like his wife? A woman that was brutally murdered? Uh, I'm sorry, you are way out of line. And I have no idea what you're talking about. <sighs> I'm talking about the lady right over there. Where is she? Right over there. Oh, yeah. Get her. Don't yeah. let her go. Yeah.